Hey, 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 guys. Good evening. Good evening again. I'm happy to be joining you. Second time for the day, but I don't mind. I'm excited to be here again. In case you don't know who I am, my name is Eva Adney, and I'm broadcasting from New York. And I am the founder of the New Market St. Elizabeth Group. Uh, I'm excited this evening to be coming to you with a special guest, someone who is no stranger to many people in New Market. Most of you may know uh, Dr. Patrick Clark. Patrick, good evening. Hi, Radley, how are you? Great, welcome, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you good so to much. be here. Great. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you're a busy man. It wasn't hard to, it wasn't easy to get to you, but here you are. You made the sacrifice and you are here to talk with us mm -hmm. and we appreciate it. And uh, thank your family for allowing you this time to spend with us here. Okay, will do. It's great to be here. Great. Thank you. Uh, Patrick um, or Dr. Clark, I, I, I just want to touch on, 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 your life in chronological order. Mm -hmm. um, you were not born in New Market, although you grew up there part of, of your life, right? Where exactly were you born? Well, I was born in, in, in London, England, um, under the Big Ben. Okay. Um, right, so um, born in England way back when, um, too far yeah. to remember. Uh -huh. And then I came, my parents, of course, came from Jamaica. Right. When they decided to retire, they came back home. Right. Um, so my mother was from Fraser, which is what five miles from Newmarket, about that. Right. And so they decided to come back to Jamaica and to settle in Newmarket. Okay. So okay. When I, so when I came, I was 13 years old. Okay. So mm -hmm. that was young enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great, great. And so your your school life started where? Well, um, man, I've been to a lot of schools in St. Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> Better you say that than me. <laughs> All right, so I started um, at Black River Secondary. Uh -huh. It's now a high school. Right. Um, but when I started, it was a secondary school. Right, and so... Um, but when, when we came to Jamaica, my mother reached out to um, somebody who was a school teacher. Right. And, they, and she asked him, what's a good school to send them to? And they said, Black River Secondary School. Mm -hmm. right. And so I started at Black River Secondary School in the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. So I, I was just starting high school. So that's when I started Black River Secondary School. I um, okay. stayed at Black River for three years, um, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. Uh -huh. and, then I and then I decided that uh, maybe it's time for a change. Okay. So I then went to States. So, so, so stick up in there. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to, um, to leave Black River? Um, how was it for you um, transitioning from London to to uh, um, St. Elizabeth and a school in St. Elizabeth. What was that experience like for you, school-wise? Well, well, the transition wasn't, wasn't so bad in terms of schooling. Uh -huh. um, the, the culture shock that I got was that I was coming from um, a fairly metropolitan area. Um, it was a small town in England, uh -huh. um, but a small town in England would compare to probably Kingston out here. Right. And when I came over, I went to a district called Fraser. Uh -huh. um, now, at the time, Fraser had no light. Um, I, I went to live with my, with my, um, my mother's parents, my grandparents. Uh -huh. And so there was no light in Fraser. Um, my grandfather's fridge was a, a kerosene oil fridge. Never saw it in my life. You actually, you actually <laughs> like, you actually like the, the fridge, um, kerosene oil fridge, and that's how the fridge is cool. Right. So that was that was the main culture shock. So no light, no TV, no computer, nothing at all like that. Um, 
studies would have been by candlelight in the evenings. Or the lamp, home sweet home. Or by, or by home sweet home lamp. <laughs> and, then, um, and just to get to where I could get the bus in the mornings, uh -huh. I, had to, I had to walk a mile in, in pitch darkness. Um, so lived in Fraser, had to walk to Brighton to get the bus to go to Black River. Um, I remember I had a friend there um, who was supposed to be my guide, um, a, a boy called Oral. Can't remember his last name, but Oral was a savior. I mean, we right. walked in the darkness to, Fraser, to Brighton many, many mornings. Um, it was a frightening experience. So what bus were you catching, pray tell? We were getting, I think that time, it may have been the champion bus. So the okay. champion bus would then go to, um, to Black River Secondary School. Now this was before Mr. Dennis came on the scene. You might remember Mr. Dennis. Yes, Mr. Dennis is a transport the student. Right. So that's so, a big, big um, market for us. But then I was in Fraser. <laughs> So then it took people from Newmarket to Blackburn. Yeah. So that first year when we were living in Fraser, didn't have the luxury of Mr. Dennis. So I had to walk a mile to Brighton. Um, so you're, you're talking about getting up at four o'clock, leaving home by 4.30, walking to Brighton, getting to Brighton by 5.30 minutes to six, and then getting on a bus. Wow. So that was, that was really, really a culture shock. Not the school. Uh, not the school. The school, uh, I enjoyed back at secondary school. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, I, I suppose the worst part that I found of Black River secondary school was the shift system. So the first year you went to school in the mornings, um, yeah. had to reach there like 7 o'clock, and you would leave by 12, 1 o'clock. Right. The evenings, when you had the shift system and you were on the evening shift, then it may have been a little bit difficult to get home in the evenings. Okay. Because you had to basically, um, anything that you could get. So many days we came home, not on buses, mm -hmm. but you came home in the back of a pickup van or you came home in the back of a truck. Mm -hmm. so it, wasn't, it wasn't like now when you had an abundance of public, public transport. And those, taxis. Days, those days it was much more difficult to get transport. You didn't have taxis at, at, at these, kids, these, these kids don't even take bus, they only take taxis. Exactly, yeah, we didn't have that. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you, if you drove in a car, it was like a special occasion. You had to know somebody, a, a so-called big man in the area, and you get a drive. <laughs> Why so is this a pickup or the back of a truck? Wow. wow. <laughs> right. So, so that was that was a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I think by the time I reached eighth grade, we were now living in Newmarket. So my parents came out. They had actually identified land in Newmarket, and they built in right. Newmarket. Um, the, the older folks will remember Mass Alley. Mass Alley was the was the builder for most people in the area, and so he built our shop in Newmarket. And so for eighth and ninth grade, I would get to school with Mr. Dennis. And that, wow. was, that was very nice. I mean, we were right in the square. Uh -huh. it, it's, I could stay at home until he drove into the square and then I just came out. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, um, guys in the, in the, on Facebook, please share. And um, leave your comments here for me so I could see who is there. So I could give you a shout out. Hi, Avak. Hi, Cleon Smith, Annette, um, Colleen Davis. Please, guys, just share so that more people can join so we can have a very spirited conversation around Patrick's um, experience living in New York. Okay, I appreciate it. And welcome. I'm happy to see you guys. Duken Williams. Hi, Mr. Williams. Good to see you. I'm Duken. Patrick is the principal for Louisville High School. Okay. He's a big supporter, big fan. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so, okay. So that, so you, you are in school now. Why is that you didn't um, find any difficulty with the education system 
at that time? Why was that not a challenge in any way to you? Um, it basically was the same level as what I had left. Um, I think when I left England at 13 years old, that probably would have been what equates out here to um, all age school. Oh. Right? So moving from the same kind of system uh -huh. to, a, to a secondary school, it was the same kind of work. Um, there okay. were some things that were a little bit different. Uh -huh. So yeah, so civics would have been a totally new yeah. subject I, for I me. understandably so. Right. But the other things, they were on par. Okay. Um, but as I said before, Black Provide, that school was a, at that time was a secondary school. Right. And so they did not offer what a high school would offer. Right. And so uh, unlike now where Black River and Stets are probably on the same level, uh -huh. in those days it was like chalk and cheese. Right. right. And so right. I was, my, well, my parents at least thought it was important to get me into a high school at that point. It's still good that you found the education system be kind of on par at that stage. Yes, yes, I had I had no problem with the education system at all. I yeah, wanted to drill was, down in that was, to make sure that it, it it came out the way it did. It was, it was, <laughs> was, it was, it was good teachers. Yeah, um, that's good. yeah, I think the whole experience at Black River was quite good. Made a lot of friends at Black River. I mean, I remember um, people like Devon Gale, we used to call him Baba. Um, Kenneth Williams, who is deceased now, unfortunately. Um, Errol Letman. I remember all of these people, especially from 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 the high school areas, yeah. from, the, from the from the sports areas, sports day. Okay. Um, we had had a lot of friends who we used to move around with, who on sports day they would be our heroes. So Errol Letman, um, Delroy Buckner, who was from Target. Uh huh. So. A lot of time we, we spent together with these with these people. Right. Another person, another person who um I was always with was was Juki. Um, I think Juki's real name was Roy Cahoon. He's in New York now. Um, you don't remember Juki, the neatest guy you can see in Newmarket. That was Juki, Miss Betty's son. Oh, 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 oh! I didn't realize yeah. that. He was Cahoon. <laughs> he was. He was. I think his name was Roy Cahoon, but everybody knew him as Duke. Okay, I didn't. I like, didn't realize. I know him as 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 um just Duke. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So you still you still in touch with him? Um, not really. I see Duke on Facebook. Okay. He's now a a, a pastor. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so yeah, he has he has made a totally different career move. I think oh. when he left, he was a policeman, then he became a, an attorney, and now he's a pastor. Okay, okay, that's mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. Be good to hear from him on uh, this program. Yes, yeah, <laughs> so, so, so you, you, you were here in Black River doing fairly well, as expected, mm -hmm. you know, you, you didn't, you were disappointed, and you wanted more. Mm -hmm. um, what drove you to want to move on to another school at that point? Well, I think when I when I think about it, uh -huh. I, think I decided that I wanted to do medicine when I was in the seventh grade. Okay. Um, I, I can't remember exactly where I was. I was at home in uh -huh. Fraser on my uh -huh. grandmother's um, veranda. And I said, you know what? I want to do medicine. Uh -huh. yeah. And, and so it was important at that time to move from a secondary school so to high school. High school. Okay. And, and the nearest school, apart from Black River, would have been States. Okay. So so um can you can you remember what inspired you at that point to want to make that that choice at that early stage? <laughs> Not really. Um it's just something that popped into my mind at the time. I want to be a doctor. Okay. Um, I okay. Can't, uh, yeah. Uh, fate. <laughs> it could be. It could be something you saw at school too that inspired. It, 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 Who knows? Anyway, so so you moved on to Stets, and right. then when you're at Stets, how was that experience for you? Stets was was again a, a very nice experience. 
uh -huh. what, I, what I missed um, from Black Pearl compared to States was that going into the tenth grade and going into the into the science stream. Right. All of those guys there were nerds. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I wasn't a nerd, I don't think. And so well, oh, we, we kind of thought you were. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't think I was. So so whereas at Black River, we used to have sports. I mean, uh -huh. I, was, I wasn't any good. I mean, I tried out for the track team. Uh -huh. I couldn't make it. I tried out for the football team and I couldn't make it. But I tried nonetheless. Um, and we had sports every week at Black River. Right. In my two years at Stets, 10th and 11th grade in the science stream, for the entire two years, we had PE once. And when we went to the PE class, half the people in the class didn't turn up, right? And so that was it. Mm -hmm. And so that is what I missed most about. Um, you didn't do it. I went to this. Yeah, the, the, the guys were a bunch of nerds. Oh. <laughs> but otherwise, it was a it was a good experience. Uh -huh. Right? And so um, I left Stets with a couple of GCEs under my, be under my belt. OK. Um, but then still on my quest to do medicine, right. I then had to do sixth form. Okay. And states did have a sixth form at that time, uh -huh. but it was not a very good sixth form. It was a, they had just started um, sixth form. Okay. And so needed something a little bit more. Okay. Right? And so again, the next best option was to go to Mondo. Okay. Right. So I, so I went from Black River to Stets to Mondo. How long did you spend in Stets? Pardon me? How long did you spend at Stets? I spent the 10th and 11th grade at Stets. Okay. And then right. you went to Mondo. Right. Were so you involved in any leadership um, activities in Stets? Or um, those are all about the books? At, no, no, no. At Stets, I became a prefect mm -hmm. in fifth form. Um, was I not? I, I, I thought I was going to be head boy, um, but that didn't, that, I thought I was going to be deputy head boy, but that didn't work out. And I even remember considering trying out for um, the student union president. Okay. Um, that was not the name of it, but it's basically the student union. Um, but then I went up against this, this guy called Donald Giddens, who is now a, a lawyer in Manhattan. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and when you talk about somebody who has the gift of gab, yeah. that was Donald Giddens. Mm -hmm. So I had no chance against him, right? So therefore, I missed my opportunity um, to be the, 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 the president of the student council at that time. Okay. But then I was a prefect in fifth form. Which was good. Mm -hmm. Which was good. Right. Mm -hmm. So so you went on to Monroe for your sixth form. I went form. to Monroe for upper and lower six. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, I did I did the sciences. Mm -hmm. Um that was a, a, a very interesting experience as well because now I moved from a situation where I was traveling um, back and forth. To school to a situation where I was now boarded. Right. At Monroe. Right. And um, man, you when I when I went to Monroe, I, I started to to miss some of the, the luxuries of home. Uh -huh. right? So Monroe is is up in the hills of, of Malvern, uh -huh. probably the highest place in St. Elizabeth, and it is cold. Very cold. It is very, very cold. Monroe is so cold when you turn on the shower, ice comes out of the pipes. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so again, that was that was a culture shock. Yeah. Um, getting up in the morning and going down to the to the to the um, showers to have a, a shower. It was it was really, really cold. Um, and so it really made you feel like you, you missed home at that point. Yeah. Um, some of the meals as well. I remember they had this 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 meal at, at Mono that they used to call Chani. It was kind of cooked beef, uh -huh. um, but it was somewhat not so tender. 
And so it was difficult to chew. And so they used to call it tawny beef. You know, and, and, and so that was that was quite an experience. Um, okay. For somebody who was always at home. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, Patrick. You mentioned uh, um, Prospect College in your in your bio. How did that oh. get into the mix of things? <laughs> right. So when I was at Black River Secondary, uh -huh. I think I was in ninth grade at this time, and about this this team came from Prospect College, and they had a meeting with all the boys in the ninth grade at that time. And they pitched us this idea of this college in St. Anne that um, was connected with the royal, the, the monarchy in England. Okay. And they said, if you did well in this college, then we would, they would send you away to England for further training. Uh -huh. You could do anything at your heart's desire, right? And so they gave all of us a, a test. And I think most of the boys in the ninth grade did the test. So it's probably about 70 boys did that test. And out of the 70, I was the only person who passed. Oh. I said, all right, let me try it. And so um, I think at the end of the... This, is the, this would have been the day um, I'm in ninth grade. So instead of going back for the, for the January term, I then went to Prospect. And so I, it was in St. Anne. This is a long way. First, I'm going to St. Anne. And when I reached to Prospect, it is at that time that I'm finding out it is a paramilitary school. Well, that's what I was going to say. How come I never hear about this place and, <laughs> and what, what became of it? <laughs> This is something that they, they that that they forgot to mention when they were telling us about all the good things in the school, right? And so when you when you reach the school and you look at their their honor board, every single person on their honor board is a high-ranking person in either the JDF or the JCF or some other military group. Around the around the world, wow. right? And so it really is a paramilitary school, and um, again, that was another culture shock, you know, because <laughs> you basically were taught to fend for yourself. Uh -huh. um, the school was a totally self-enclosed school, so you had to, for example, on a weekend, you would have to go out and look for coconuts on this plantation, because it's on a big, big plantation. Um, so you would have to go out and look for coconuts on a weekend. And then when you carry those coconuts back home, you'd have to grate the coconuts and you'd have to make oil from the coconuts. Wow. Right? If you collect 10 coconuts, that's your job to provide the oil. Um, we had to cook for ourselves. Um, we had to, the, the good thing was that it, it taught us discipline. At the end of it, you mm -hmm. became very, very disciplined. They taught us how to play a musical instrument and they taught us how to march. So did, you learn, things, did you learn to play something? I was learning to play a bugle. Okay. But I didn't stay long enough to master it. Okay. Um, I think after six months, I said no. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going back to this school. In fact, um, when I finally got home was when they were giving us the Christmas holidays. Now, because it's a paramilitary school, you can't leave the school empty because you need some boys to run the school. So half of the school went home New Year's Eve, well, Christmas Eve to New Year's Eve, and then half the other the other half went home on New Year's Eve. So I was in the group that went home New Year's Eve. And you could not leave the school until 10 p.m. So I'm leaving 10 p.m. from Ottawa. So I've never been to Ottawa in my life before. Right? Um, on New Year's Eve. Really have no idea where I'm going. I, I got a bus to um, Montego Bay. 
This is like now probably like midnight. Got another bus to Whitton, and I'm at Whitton at one o'clock in the morning. You can't get any transport. I have to wait until I had to wait until daylight. Oh my daylight God. comes, bus start to run again because you know that time. This is probably like um, 1980s. Mm -hmm. 1980s. You can't get no transport at one o'clock. That's through, that's through the hills. Right. You have a truck. <laughs> yeah. So so that night I spent sleeping in Whitton Market. Went okay. to the, got got to go home the following morning. Reached home probably about nine o'clock. Um, so I was tired. I had not bathed for more than 24 hours. I was extremely hungry. You can't get no food at Witton at 2 o'clock in the morning. Ah. And so, I mean, by the time I reached home, I, I ate off two tins of sardine and half a loaf of, of hard bread. Uh -huh. And I told my parents I was not going back to that school at all. <laughs> it was an interesting experience. But it was what were their thoughts? Hmm? What were their thoughts? You know, what was <laughs> what was the, the feeling at the time? You should go back or not? No, they never they never forced me. Um they they accepted what I said. I think I think um seeing me come home and I lost a lot of weight, I probably lost like 30 pounds. Um seeing me come home at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, after leaving um, Ocherius from like 10 o'clock the night before was kind of a shock for them. So when I said I want to go back to Black River, it wasn't a problem. They said, all right, you wow. your way. Wow. Does that school still exist? It does. Um, <laughs> and I have been back to the school. Well, Prospect is, they, have, they actually have tours in the school. So it's a big plantation and it's kind of a tourist attraction. So you can go and you can tour the school, you can tour the chapel. They have a lovely chapel. And um, I think at Christmas time, they even have a carol service that okay. is put on by the boys in the school. So yes, it, it is a school that um, is still going on. And in fact, they have a lot of graduates who are the top in military organizations or in the JCF. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. I had no yeah. idea about that. Yeah, but since I had no intention of going into the JCS or the JDF, yeah, that I, I like the discipline I got from it. Um, and I think it did make me a lot more self-sufficient than I would have been if I did not go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you, need that. That it. mm -hmm. you needed that. It served its purpose. It did. It did its service purpose. So, so do you think that your success in becoming a doctor after that had a lot to do with your your little um, time spent in that school, though? Um, I think I think every every facet of your life uh -huh. helps you to reach where you're going. Uh -huh. from, so from that point of view. The, the increased discipline probably did help some. Okay, okay. You've had some back and forth with trials and failure, but you seem to have always just brushed yourself off and keep going. Right, right. In fact, when I came back from Prospect, um, no, this is, this is after having gone through six months or more of paramilitary training, where, for example, they would wake you up in the middle of the night and then you had to go and you had to be marching, you had to be playing the bugle. So when I came back to Black River, I actually used to round the boys up and teach them how to march and that kind of thing. You know, so it was, it was, it was, it was really interesting. That's cool, that's cool, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Um, well, Things happen and they happen for a good reason sometimes. Exactly. exactly. That, 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 that was that, that, that little um, point probably was a good, good thing for you at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, you also you also failed to, to mention that you were part of the school challenge quiz at some point. Oh, when I went to Monroe, right? So 
So states had a school challenge quiz uh -huh. team. But at that time, it was just a fledgling team, right? In fact, I remember one year, um, states went to the school challenge quiz and they got through to the second round. Uh -huh. And so that was like a big, big deal. They won their first match. And when they, the members of the team came back, it was like they were national heroes in the school. You know, it was really a really big deal. Uh -huh. um, going to state, going to Monroe, however, it was a little bit different. So I left states um, after having done O level, went to Monroe in sixth form, and I said, okay, let me try it for the school challenge quiz team because I consider myself somewhat versed in, in general knowledge. Right. And so I decided I'm going to try it for the school challenge quiz team at Monroe. You know, now bear in mind that Monroe has had a school challenge quiz team for years and they have one school challenge quiz many, many times. Uh -huh. So I said, all right, um, nothing beats a try. So I went and I tried out for the quiz team. Uh -huh. So I'm in the room now with about 20 other boys. Um, and it is practice. And the quiz master is asking everybody questions. Uh -huh. When I look around, <laughs> I can't answer any of these questions. Uh -huh. And the third formers and the fourth formers are just reeling off the answers. Right. You know, so <laughs> after the first, after the first um, practice, I said, no, I can't go back uh -huh. to this school challenge thing. And because it was embarrassing. Uh -huh. you know, I knew all the answers uh -huh. and I could not answer one question. Right. So, so I became a cheerleader. I did not go back to the um, okay. practice sessions at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. You didn't, you, you choose not to dig into that one. Nope. Just let nope. it go. Nope. I thought it was futile. Yeah. <laughs> just like, just like the athletic um, exactly. part. Mm -hmm. Did you really want to, to be an athlete? Like, um, yeah, I, I did. I mean, I, I tried out um, <laughs> at, the, at the 100 meters. Uh -huh. Always, always came fourth and fifth. Uh -huh. um, I tried out for the football okay. team. Okay. Um, that wasn't much of a success. I tried out for the cross country team. Uh -huh. um, yeah, that was that was a no. Well, Dr. Clark, we can't give you an award for trying. Yeah, I, I did try for all the teams. <laughs> you did, you did your best. You tried. I did, I did. And at some point, it just occurred to you that all of these things that you're trying or you want to be good at, you're not really good at them. And so you, 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 you sought to focus on what you were going to be able to achieve. Mm -hmm. The thing that you saw possible for you to achieve. Right. What gave you that kind of maturity at that point to just realize that, hey, let go of these things that you're trying, that you want, that all this star mm -hmm. show that you're not making it in and focus on this thing that you can achieve if you focus. What made you kind of just- I never, I, um, I think once you make up to your mind to do something, mm -hmm. you must just say to yourself that failure is not a possibility. Right. At no point, when I decided in the seventh grade that I'm going to be a doctor, at no point did I say to myself, I wonder if I can really do it. Uh -huh. It was just, it was just a, a done deal. Right. Um, and therefore, it was my only focus. So when I went to Monroe, um, well, even from States, so from Stess, I went into the science stream because you have to have biology, you have to have chemistry, you have to have physics. Yeah. When I went to Monroe, I stayed in that stream. Um, and from Monroe, I went to university. Now, my grades were not good enough to get straight into um, medicine from high school. Right. Right? But it never occurred to me at that point that, that okay, there is a, a, a detour along the way. Right. Because, because most of the other um, boys in the school never got into medicine right away. So okay. to, to my mind, to my thinking, this was the, the natural path. It was normal. So it, it was, was normal. normal. It was normal, right. Um, so 
went, went left Monroe, went to university, I went into, of course, a science stream. Uh -huh. um, so I went into what we at that time had called the Faculty of Natural Science. Right. It's called something different now. Um, but again, I went into the science stream, spent the first year there, um, and then I got into medicine after the first year of natural science. So all along, it was just a steady path. Right, there may have it, 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 it may have seemed like there were hiccups along the way. Yeah. I, never, I never considered that. I mean, to me, it was just me working towards this goal. Right, and you never took any detour. No, I don't <laughs> took any, de any, any detour. I mean, when I so, so after actually when I when I left Mondo, um, I actually went to work for a year before mm -hmm. going to university. Where did you work? I went to Kingston to stay with relatives and I worked in the Ministry of Social Security. Okay. Um, but that was really a question of finances. Mm -hmm. yeah, so rather than, than going straight from high school to university, let me go and work some money, see what the real world is like. Right. But, but it was always in my mind to go to university after the first year. Right, and so I went to work at the Ministry of Social Security. Uh -huh. And in fact, while I was there, part of my duties at the Ministry of Social Security was that I would have to go um, to a government-run place on Hanover Street where uh -huh. farm workers would come before they were dispatched to America. Uh -huh. And so while working there, I used to come into contact with a lot of the farmers from Newmarket um, before they went away on farm working. Oh. Right? So I, I consider that as a, as a plus. Uh -huh. and, and, and when they saw me, it was, always, it was always nice because you come to Kingston and you don't see anybody from Newmarket for a long while. So they came and they, they saw a friendly face. And yeah. I saw a friendly face also. Right. So, so it was really good working there. And I think it gave me some real world experience before going to university. Okay, great. And especially social social um, experience. Right. I like this part of your, your um, bio where you said you spent many nights studying in my parents' shop, which is bar and grocery, between serving a shot of white rum, selling some flour and reading a chapter of physics to the sound of yellow man singing, I'm getting married in the morning. <laughs> right, right. That, that gives you an idea of how far back it was. Um, I, I suspect a lot of your listeners don't know who yellow man is. <laughs> <laughs> That's so typical of new markets. <laughs> <laughs> right, so my parents had a, a, a bar and grocery in the middle of new market. Right. They talked about being in the center of town it was the center of town. So once you drove into Newmarket, you had to see the Oasis, as, yeah. the, as the shop was called, um, Mr. and Mrs. Clark's shop. And it was a bar and it was a grocery. So we used to sell liquor and we used to sell grocery. So it was open um, from early in the morning until in the evening. It wasn't just bar and grocery, Patrick. You had a restaurant too. It was a restaurant as well, right. right. There was also a restaurant, right? And so my parents had to work long hours, right? And so I did not get away from that. So I had to spend long hours in the shop. Um, so when I, when I, before I, before I went to school in the morning, when I was on the afternoon shift, I would be in the shop. When I came home in the evenings or when I came home in the afternoon, if I was on the morning shift, then I would still be in the shop. And this is a duke, and this is a bar, so you're going to have a jukebox playing. Um, for all of your younger listeners who don't know what a jukebox is, <laughs> at that time we had the jukebox and you put money in and you would select a tune. Um, and so you would have that playing all day, every day, once the bar was open. When yeah, somebody so put them, once someone put the money in. Right, once somebody put money in, you know? And so this was me now in the shop, selling a, a, a shot of white rum, um, selling 
a, a two pound of flour and studying, right? And so between serving customers, I was studying physics, I was studying chemistry, I was studying biology. Um, and then when the shop was closed, we closed sometime between 11 and 12. When the shop was closed, I might get a, a three, four hours, get up about four o'clock in the morning. And before I went to school, would start studying again. Yeah. And anyone who was around at that time can totally relate to this story. Right, right. You know? sure. Because mm -hmm. there you were, um, this young boy, uh, ambitious, wants to be a doctor, mm -hmm. not really socializing much because you're studying most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, helping out your parents, doing your work, head down, you know, all the time studying. And you, at that point, you would have been like the first doctor to come out of Newmarket. Mm -hmm. There was one before, mm -hmm. I don't know about that person. Mm -hmm. I mean, medical doctor. Right, right. And um, so everybody had their eyes on you, whether or not you would make it. <laughs> really, you couldn't fail. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. No matter how many times you 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 fell off, you'd have to get up and go back on that horse because mm -hmm. the whole thing? community had their mm -hmm. eyes on you mm -hmm. and and had you as this person who is going to be the first doctor from this small, small little place. And that must have been a lot of pressure on you. Although from what you're talking since you started, I don't get the feeling that your parents pressured you at all. No, no, my parents. Yeah. But um, I told my parents what I want to do. Uh -huh. And at no point did they did they say, um, I don't think you have the brain for it. Um, um, we don't have enough money for it. Right. It was just, it was just a given right. that this was my pathway. Yeah. Did I you feel I, any personal pressure from the community about you were on your career? Or you weren't talking with them enough for it to bother you like that? No, no, I felt no pressure from the community at all. Okay. Um, I think some of some of the the older heads in the community, um, I might have discussed it with them. So, for example, um, Lester, who also had a shop across the way, Lester Mirage, uh -huh. um, he probably would have known about my my um, proposed career paths. Uh -huh. um, and I remember that Lester was actually the, the, the he was a businessman. And apart from my parents, he, would probably, he was probably the only businessman who I knew um, well. And he was actually the person who was the guarantor for me um, to get a student loan um, okay. to go to university. Mm -hmm. So he would have known about my plans. I'd have probably discussed them with Mr. Cummins, um, with a couple of the older folks in the area. Mm -hmm. but there, but there was never any any pressure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, wonderful, wonderful story, Patrick. So um, later in that, I, I I don't know. I became friends with the Clarks at mm -hmm. some point, but I don't think it was from that early, early, early day. Um, maybe after you left, no. Probably not after not I left and I came back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think it is as far back as when you graduated university because I, I went to your graduation it would have been I probably became friends with them while you were away mm -hmm. and so you used to come there and yeah I used to go around there and help to serve stuff as well yeah, and play right. music and do all of these things and help out Mrs. Clark she was the sweetest person <laughs> ever yeah. you know and even, and even graduation uh, 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 that is the that is the one of the good things about coming from a small community. Uh -huh. I remember when I was graduating from university. Yeah. But my parents hired a bus. Yes. And so <laughs> the entire new market came <laughs> up for the graduation. Yeah. And when I went up and, and they called my name, you could hear this loud cheer <laughs> around the back. You know, it it was it was something else. I think it, it, is, like, it is things like those why it's good to come from a small community. Okay, can you, can you won't get that kind of that kind of camaraderie feeling. Right, right. A big city. It's yes. Anonymous. And we were so all friends and family, right? We we're so proud of you. You know, finally, Patrick is a doctor. We had a doctor from the community. You know, mm -hmm. never mind. You never work a day there. <laughs> you know, 
it's just the, the okay. thought that you finished mm -hmm. and everybody is just proud and embracing the idea that and mm -hmm. and i think we were pretty much aware of the struggles some we 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 all didn't know the details but knew that there were struggles in between school when you had to stop and come back and be there for a while and then leave again mm -hmm. you know people talk so i think we were kind of aware that it wasn't like a smooth thing for you to to mm -hmm. go through this whole journey but right. you kind of just stayed with it and i i think that's even more why we were so proud of you mm -hmm. completing that journey and and um we all celebrated pack up in the bus and went to kingston and yeah that was a nice experience <laughs> yes <laughs> very nice experience mm -hmm. I think that was the first time I saw Mona Chapel and fell in love with it. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, but thank God, you know. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you at university, though, on a personal level? Was it easy? Mm -hmm. Was it hard? Was it was it still that struggle? It's a, it was a lot of work. Uh -huh. right? but you, but you, when you focus on what you are there to achieve, small detours along the way will not deter you, right? And so, as I said before, to me, it was not a question of can I finish? It was a question of when I finish. Yeah. And so I just, I, I basically just put my, my head down and studied. Mm -hmm. um, it never occurred to me that I could fail any of the exams. You know, right. as, I, as I tell my children today, if you study for an exam, right, if you work, you cannot fail. Mm -hmm. right? So to me, it was just a question of putting my axe to the wheel and persisting in what I was brought here to do. Mm -hmm. right? so, the, so the whole question of failure never came in. Um, mm -hmm. That I took out student loans, so there may have been some um, financial challenges, mm -hmm. but I took out student loan. Mm -hmm. And even then, I mean, if I, if, if I tell somebody now, these days, what I borrowed, they would be totally shocked. Mm -hmm. In those days, it was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I remember for student loan, at the end of my undergrad, for the whole five years, at the end, I owe twenty six thousand dollars, <laughs> you know, which, which was which was, a, which was a small fortune at that time. Yeah. You know? So, <laughs> you know, but if you tell, if you tell um, people now that that's what you owed, <laughs> you're going to be in shock because now if you finish medical school. You probably owe about twenty six million dollars. Even in US, <laughs> even US dollars, that's a small amount. Exactly right. So, but at that time, it was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, I had to take student loan out every year. Mm -hmm. um, living on campus was a was a big deal. It was it was expensive, so it was convenient, but yeah. it was expensive. Um, and then for the last two years, I I lived off campus. Okay. And even that was was met with some challenges. I mean, getting a bus um, would incur in, increased cost. Mm -hmm. And so you had to basically watch your budget budget very carefully at that time. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in there you met your wife. Right. I I my, my wife was actually it was actually the sister of a friend that I met right. in medical in medical in, in natural science. Okay. And um, I remember towards the end of the first year, uh -huh. um, we met, and I think the chemistry was was instant. Wow. And, and okay. so the good thing I I felt about that is that we became extremely good friends. Okay. And so it, we probably started going together after about two years. Mm -hmm. I remember, I remember the night exactly. You know, we had gone to see a Freddie Jackson concert. Okay. So I just, I just started working. Um, Freddie Jackson was big those times. You know, we, we talk about Freddie Jackson. The only other person who probably was bigger than Freddie Jackson would be like Lionel Richie. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. right? um, these young people don't know about Freddie Jackson, but you had Freddie Jackson, you had the Manhattans. So when all those guys were coming to Jamaica, it was a big deal. I remember the night we went to a Freddie Jackson concert, you know, and we were in the taxi, I was bringing her back home. And it was that night that we had our first kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the exact night. And I said to myself, yeah, this, 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 this woman is going to be my wife. Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh, so it was, it was kind of like when I said, I'm going to do medicine. Uh -huh. There was no if and but about it. That's when? This was, this was um, probably like 19. I just finished medical school so it's probably about 1990 it was like right. december december 1990 okay and at that time we decided but well, i decided that she was going to be my wife oh wonderful you know she had any say in the matter she might say otherwise and uh, she's, a, <laughs> she's a nurse right she's a nurse she's a nurse lecturer so she doesn't work on the wards anymore she teaches nurses okay that's right. wonderful mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So yeah. we got two years later. Ah, oh, mm -hmm. how wonderful. Right. So we have now been married for almost 30 years. Whoa. Mm -hmm. 30 wow. years next year. And how year. many kids? Two, two children. Okay. Beautiful girls. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Who well, I must say have not given me any trouble. <laughs> this is at least not yet. Okay. Oh, <laughs> nice. Nice, nice. Patrick, you know, the, the, the good thing about um, telling your story mm -hmm. and talking about this journey is how much of a difference it will make, especially to young people. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Because they, they, uh, they know the Clarks. They had a shop. They had a restaurant in there, too, and residents upstairs. They were living abroad. Everybody would think, okay, so these are rich people, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, so they could afford everything that you, you wanted and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But That was far from the case. Huh? That was far from the case. Yeah, because mm -hmm. people don't know, they wouldn't know. And they would just look on and assume that your life was just this, this real storybook thing of, Mm -hmm. You wanted to be a doctor and okay, your parents could afford everything and everything was fine and on to mm -hmm. But, you know, the way you, you recounted your steps, your journey, it's no different from many of us in terms of struggle. Right. Mm -hmm. It might have been different type of struggle, but it's still a struggle. You, mm -hmm. you still had to do, you still had to take loan, you still had to, you know, Go to things you had to work while mm -hmm. you're studying, you fail, you go back, you, you know, mm -hmm. all of these things. So it serves the purpose of telling or reminding these young people that it's not the journey, it's what's at the end. Mm -hmm. And therefore you have to stick with it. If you you see you have to have your goals in life. Yeah. Um and no matter what background you come from, mm -hmm. you have to know within yourself that you can make it. Right. And success is not only for those who were born with a silver spoon. Right. Probably. I mean, many people don't know a silver spoon. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Even if you think they do, it's, that's mm -hmm. not the case. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so it's important that you know what you want. And just go for it. Just focus. It is. It is. Once you once once you make up your mind, um, and you chart your course, right? You keep at it. You can always make it. Uh -huh. um, so you should not make you should not make um, finances get in your way because the finances will come. You should not even make education get in the way because a lot of the most successful people only have a high school education. You know? I mean, if we were to look at a lot of the most successful people in the world, they did not have a university degree. You, know, you look at somebody like much Bill later. Gates. Some of them got it much later. Right, much later. I mean, look at somebody like Bill Gates who did not finish university. Um, so you don't have to 
it is not all based on education. Education is good, right? But you must not think that if you are not so educated that you cannot make it in life. Right? As somebody said, you should not make your IQ be stronger than your I can. Mm -hmm. You make up your mind, you chart your course, you make your goals, and if you stick with it, you can make it. Right, right, right. So I'm happy. I'm happy you're able to pass on that advice because this, the whole, the whole, the whole point of what we're doing here is to inspire young people mm -hmm. or people who just think that they don't have to fight to get to where, what they want anymore. Go the easy route, you know. They have to, they have to work hard. Yes, they have to work hard. So you finish university, you have a beautiful mm -hmm. wife and all of this good stuff. And then you went off to work. Where did you go to work first? So I went to KPH first, mm -hmm. the battlefield. Okay. Um, I remember when I finished inter when I finished medical school, my first day I was on call. Mm -hmm. And I'm at KPH at two o'clock in the morning trying to find supplies to look after a patient, mm -hmm. sweat running off of me, can't find nothing. And I said to myself, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> you know, it was, it was you, you know, you just leave. So the transition from medical student to intern right. is like going from a high school student to a, a battleground as a, as a soldier. Wow. You know, it, it is a shock. You right. know? And, and you, you go onto the ward and you're the first line of defense. But when, when you have a patient who needs care, it is the intern they call first. Right. Right. You know? So you go there, you know, this is totally new to you. You don't know where to find anything. Um, the, the nurses think that you don't know anything. Yeah, the seniors think, okay, you've seen it one time, you can now sink or swim. So Are that from, so it was hard. Too. <laughs> what was that? Are you from the country too? So you're full full. Exactly. And so, <laughs> and, and so this is this is, and this is KPH, you know, where yeah. the, which is the mecca of, of, of medicine in, in Jamaica. Right. Um you see everything at KPH, you yeah? know. And it was a, a great learning experience. They right. say you can work, once you work at KPH, once you work at Victoria Jubilee Hospital, you can go anywhere in the world to work after that. True. You can, go work, you can work anywhere in the country. You can work anywhere in the Caribbean. You can work anywhere in the world. Okay. Once you have gotten a taste of KPH and Victoria Jubilee. True. So after you left there, mm -hmm. where did you go? Well, I stayed, I stayed at Jubilee at, at KPH Jubilee for quite some time. Um, so I finished internship between Kingston Public Hospital and Bustamante. And I decided I wanted to do obstetrics and gynecology. Mm -hmm. um, I remember telling a, a friend of mine from States that I wanted to do um, O and G. Uh -huh. said, Patrick, that's not a good field. <laughs> that's, that's not a good field. Um, you're gonna have problem with your with your wife. Uh -huh. you know? So I said, no, I don't believe that. And and but she was the only person who would discourage me. I mean, we we've spoken afterwards, and and it 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 it's always a, a joke. Um, but that I did decide to do that, um, and I have never regretted it. Do you even know why you choose that that that, that um, specialty? Do I wanted know? I wanted to do something surgical uh -huh. um, because I like to operate, um, but I also wanted to do something where my patients are healthy uh -huh. and. and I can bring happiness to patients, right. right? And so that combination, I thought you can only get from obstetrics and gynecology, you know, wow. because a, a, a large part, probably 75% is obstetrics and you're bringing 
you're dealing with pregnant women. Now, for most, for most women, they're the days that they have the most joy uh, when they bring a, a, a life into the world right. and when they become married, right? And so I thought it was a, a perfect mix. Okay. Right? And, so, and so that was really the driving force um, for um, me choosing a career in obstetrics and gynecology, and, um, and I'm loving it. Yeah, you certainly have the patience and, and the demeanor for someone mm -hmm. who would be mm -hmm. a good person in that field. Right, it's, 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 it's a lovely field. Um, it, it is it's time consuming, um, it is hard work, and especially as a junior person, you spend a lot of nights in the hospital. Uh -huh. Babies have this thing that they like to come at night. Yeah. <laughs> um, labor occurs at night for most women, right? And so you have to be prepared to spend a lot of nights in the hospital. You have to be prepared to spend a lot of nights where you would leave your house and go to the hospital. But but I think it is it is it is rewarding. Um, when you see a patient, one of the most rewarding things to me now is, for example, when I walk in Ocho Rios, um, or even Kingston sometimes, and, uh, and I hear a patient say, Dr. Clark, Dr. Clark. And when you stop, they say, oh, you delivered my son many years ago, or you delivered my daughter. In fact, I was in New York one time. I think we went to New York and we were in Fordham. You know, so we're walking around in Fordham. And I hear this gentleman bawling out, Dr. Clark, Dr. Clark. You know, this is in New York, you know. And when I look around, the gentleman who came up to me said, oh, Dr. Clark, you delivered my wife <laughs> a few years ago. You know? So I find that immensely re rewarding. Right. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Are you still there? I'm yes, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a good feeling. Right, it is. Mm -hmm. It is a good feeling. And um and and so you're now employed at um at St. Asbury Hospital, right? Mm -hmm. St. So, so I remember when I finished actually, when I finished post grad, because mm -hmm. I, I I did most of my training at Victoria Jubilee Hospital. Um and again that is a that is a a wonderful learning experience. It is the biggest maternity hospital in the Caribbean. Mm. So, so you learn how to do everything in obstetrics and gynecology. And so when I finished at Jubilee, my intention was to stay at Jubilee. I came, actually came to St. Anne one year because the doctors in St. Anne were, were short. You had some doctors who were going off and leave. And so they called Jubilee and they asked for volunteers um, for somebody to come down to St. Anne for two weeks to relieve those persons. So I said, all right, I had just finished uh, my postgrad. And so I went, came down for two weeks and I had a ball. Uh -huh. St. Anne's Bay is a base called a seaside town. Yeah. So St. Anne's Bay, you have Ocherios, um, tourist area, you can see the sea from the hospital. Um, the people are much more easygoing. It is far from the, 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 the rat race of Kingston. Right. right? And, so, and so at the end of the two weeks, I went back and I said to my wife, you know, I liked it down there. I think I'm going to go work down there. Now, she wasn't happy about that at all. <laughs> you know, because she's a Kingstonian. Uh -huh. You know? And I said, no, but it, it, it is quite nice, right? And so this was like, this was like July. Um, and so I stayed at, at Jubilee for another five months, came down to St. Anne's Bay in January of 1998 or 1999. And I have been there ever since. Initially, when I came, my family was still living in Kingston. Uh -huh. And so I would go up like two, three times for the week. Um, until we moved down, the entire family moved down to St. Anne's Bay after about two years. 
right? So I was really getting tired of all this traveling back and forth between okay. Kingston and um, St. Anne's Bay. And that time you did not have the highway. So mm -hmm. traveling to Kingston was like a two and a half, three hour journey. Right. And it was really, really taxing. And so we moved down. And I think I can speak for my wife when I say we have not regretted it. Um, it has been a good move. And I enjoy working at St. Anne's Bay. It, it kind of reminds me of, of Newmarket because it is a, a small hospital. Right. Right? So the same small community feel that you got from Newmarket where everybody knows everybody else is the same kind of feeling you get from working at St. Anne's Bay. So you know everybody, everybody gets along. Um, and, and the patients know you, you know what I mean? I cannot walk in Ocherius or in St. Anne's Bay without seeing several patients who know me, right? And, and, and so I, I like that, that, small, um, that small town feel. It, it really is nice. That nice little village. Right, it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, does, it does have its disadvantages sometimes. Um, so I remember, I remember um, a couple of years back, well, like 10 years or so, I was, when my children were going to, um, to prep school and they were, the, the, the committee of prize giving was trying to find ways of giving prizes to the parents of the children. And so somebody approached me and said, um, would you like to, give somebody a free visit you no know? no i said i said no problem um but they when they asked me that they did not know that i was an obgyn uh -huh. so i said yes i have no problem doing a free visit but then these are all people who know me right and so when they found out that i was an obgyn nobody wanted the prize because nobody wants to come to an OBG where that they know before. Well, the music was just going to the regular doctor. Exactly, <sighs> right. And so it does, from that point of view, it does have its disadvantages, oh. but the benefits <laughs> far outweigh the disadvantages. Mm. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> okay, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Well, I, 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 I really like the journey and the way your life turned out, Patrick, that's commendable. We, I have no complaints. You continue to be really proud of you. Mm. We listed some passions here. Photography. When did you become interested in photography? Some of my passions. I think two of my, my main passions, I, I think, have been like buckle. Now, as far as photography is concerned, at some point, when we went to, I was tied up, I, I got tied up going to prize givings mm -hmm. um, for my children mm -hmm. and not being able to take pictures. Right. So I'd have, to, I'd have to rely on the professional photographers to get a picture afterwards. And oftentimes these pictures were not to my liking. Right. So after two or three years of going through that, I decided that, okay, let me buy myself a camera, right? And so, I did. And anytime I'm buying anything, I research it ad nausea. You know, so I went and I bought up all these photography magazines. I spent many, many hours online searching for the camera. And in all of this, I realized, oh, oh wait, this, this, this photography business is, is very interesting. You know, it became so interesting to me that I actually stopped reading a lot of medicine and started reading a lot of photography. So what camera did you end up buying at that time? Of course, a Canon. What else is there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So I bought a Canon camera. And after that, I started to accumulate cameras. And I started practicing and practicing. And, I, and then I started doing functions. I would go, for example, um, when we had the prize givings, I would take pictures. And people would see the, the, the pictures and say, these, these are really good. Um, when we had functions at the hospital, I would take pictures there and people were very impressed. And I, I think um, what got me really, really into it was when a doctor approached me one time and said, Doc, can you take some engagement pictures for me? 
So I took the engagement pictures. We went to um, this park in Ochoiras, took the engagement pictures. Um, a real nice engagement shoot and the pictures were, if I do say so myself, very, very good. After she saw the, in, the, the engagement pictures, she came back and said, Doc, can you do my wedding? So I said, but um, <laughs> I, wasn't really, I wasn't really ready for that. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, this is a wedding now in Kingston with two or 300 people at right. Texas. And so I, I declined wedding at that point, you know? But it got me thinking, right? And so I started doing even more research, practicing even more. And then after that, several people asked me to do their weddings. So in the end, I ended up doing about three or four weddings as the solo, as a main photographer. Right. I, I, I think they came out quite well. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but, but, but weddings, it's, it's I, I lift my hat off to photographers because weddings, as a wedding photographer, it's it's a high paced, um, high anxiety situation. You don't, you don't have do overs. No, you, you, you can't say you can't say oh the pictures were good. Let's go back and do yeah. another day. You know, it's a, a one time thing. You know, and so it is it is stressful. Yeah, you know? I, mean, I kind of compared it. It's it's some it's it's almost as stressful as doing a delivery. Yeah. It, it, it is high stress. I, I lift my hats off to wedding photographers. Um, because I've become so busy now, I, I'm not really into it anymore. I do intend to go back into it when I retire, but it probably will not be wedding photography. It's going to be something less stressful, like, for example, landscape photography or something like that. But you never know. I, 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 love, I love weddings. Um, portraiture, people, is good. Um, portraiture is good. A lot of people are into that now. But I find that boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like I like the fast paced stuff. You know, I mean, I, I I loved it. I mean, yeah, your heart was boom, 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 boom during the weddings, and you 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 had to get that shot, and you had to right. move quickly. You had to pose the bride and pose the groom. Uh -huh. you know? So I like the excitement of it, but it is it 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 is very very stressful. Okay. Another growing field, I think, is is real estate. Um, no, 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 not real estate. Um, personal. Is, huh? Um, not real estate. I I not so much into real estate at all. You want to do the outdoors? Oh, you mean oh, you mean photography. Um, not real estate photography, but landscape photography. So I'd like to go to scenic areas okay. and 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 take pictures. Um, I suppose with COVID, that has kind of put a spoke in my wheel because I haven't been able to travel. But I used to like when we used to travel to to the states and you would go to scenic areas and you would take pictures and that kind of thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And you like public speaking as well. Um, I'm trying to get into public speaking. Okay. Um, I think this is a this is an interest that probably came about not so long ago, um, probably three four years ago. Um, and again, I, I I think I probably would be further along in it if it wasn't for COVID. So it is, it is not a, a long time um, past time of mine. I think that um, given the chance, I would have a lot to offer. Yeah. My focus on public speaking, I, will, I want to be a motivational speaker um, because I think that I like what, for example, what Martin Luther King said, not everybody can be famous, but, but everybody can be great because greatness comes from service. Okay. And so I think having achieved what I have, um, with, with age comes wisdom. Right. And I think I have, I'm now at a point where I think I can impart a lot to the younger people. Now, Here's a good news now. <laughs> 
here's the good news. Start right now. Just Start right now. Right. Yeah. There, mm -hmm. you, uh, you have influence, and you can use that influence right from tonight. You can label yourself that way. You don't need no special condition. COVID provided mm -hmm. the best condition for anyone who wants to be in things like public speaking. The absolutely mm -hmm. best opportunity are right now within this COVID period. So if you in front of a computer screen. So, yeah. Uh, that that might be true, but um, I think I think I still prefer being on stage in front of a big big crowd. But here's the thing: this is the best way to start because you it is, it is. start this way, people will know what you have to offer, and then when things clear up, you can go before the live audience. Right, exactly. You're, exactly. Missing, you're missing the opportunity to start at this stage. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I was in a virtual conference last week with a lot of big, big people, including TG, Jakes, and blah, blah, blah. They were all filmed and brought to the conference and played one behind the other behind the other because in the days of COVID, that's how everything is done. Yes, yes, yes. It, it, it has come with a lot of changes. Yeah. And I, hope, I hope when COVID is over, mm -hmm. um, we will be going back to in-person um seminars in person conferences yeah well don't don't miss don't miss this cheap opportunity when you don't have to be renting space hotel rooms and whatever to have that, to that is that is that is so true that is so true a fortune so because people don't have that expense to deal with now mm. a lot more millionaires are being made out of public speaking because okay. they're doing it virtually Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, take take the chance now. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. Take the chance now. You'll you'll you will you will will hold hands later. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm 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 sure you will have a lot to contribute to that, like anything else that you have done, which 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 usually yield great, excellent, um rewarding um finishing. For you, so so you will do well in that, like anything else, because yes, you right. be really intense when you when you put your mind to. Yes, I think focus is key. Yeah. Once you focus on something, right, you achieve it. Yeah, and and absolutely, you can do it. And I would encourage you to just go ahead and do it right now. Don't don't waste another day thinking or waiting, because you're also missing a lot of opportunities right now. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, I'm planning. I'm planning a um a, a youth conference a youth mm -hmm. summit for the end of this month. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll give you your first run on that one. Oh, that that would be good. <laughs> that would be good. I, you must always take these these um the, take the bull by the horn as they, as they say. Yeah. And one of the one of the best ways to get into public speaking mm -hmm. is to speak on every conceivable occasion so don't turn down anything um i used to I've, I've told my wife several times i don't volunteer for anything but if you ask me i will step up yeah, <laughs> yeah. just go for it mm -hmm. a lot of people come on to hear an interview and other people call them for interviews on other places all over so mm -hmm. this also opens up a lot of opportunity for other people who wouldn't well, who wouldn't have some of those opportunities otherwise? Okay, you know? excellent. So yeah. Anyhow, um, we're well past the hour, and um, we've been chatting and chatting and chatting, and I I I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, because you you are so easy to talk to, um, Patrick. Always, mm -hmm. you haven't changed. You know, um, you haven't even aged. So. Well, that's good to hear. That's 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 the country air. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Um, so we continue this another time. There's there are lots of things that you can be involved with and engage with from New Market. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we have had a few doctors since. Okay, that's excellent. Yeah, including we must, we must link up um, a new new market doctors group. Ah, uh, yeah. We link we, up right, yeah. One of them is is one of the comrades. You remember the comrades from Happy Grove? Right, right. Um, um, who is, is at Nuttall Hospital now, right? No, no, no. He is the um, 
CEO of not RMD. Chief Medical Officer at um, Hargreaves. At Hargreaves, right, right, at Hargreaves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we have had a few doctors from there now. Okay, that's wonderful. I understand that there were two young ladies that graduated recently too. Mm -hmm. So we will connect again. I want to use this opportunity to thank you. And before you run off, do you have anything you want to say to the community? Any advice, young people? I would, I would, I would, I would like to say to the young people of New Market that do not think that because you come from a small community, you can't achieve. The skies are the limit. It is not important where you are coming from. What is important is where you are going. And where you are going is dependent on you. The best way to predict your future is to create your future. So make your goals. Keep your goals in mind. Strive towards your goals. And know that the only limiting factor for you to make your goals is you. Once you put your head to the wheel, anything is possible. The sky is the limit. Great, great. I hope they're listening. We just have to keep going, keep doing it, keep at it. Mm -hmm. Wonderful to spend time with you, um, Dr. Clark. Thank and you. Thank you. you. And mm -hmm. really enjoyed this. And hopefully we'll do it again soon. Have a blessed night. And you too. Thank you very much for having me. And Thank hello to all the new people of New Market. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Patrick. Okay, then. Bye-bye. Right. Right. Okay, bye.